बुद्ध्यादृतिगृहतया आत्मसंस्थ मन कृवा न किंचिदि चिंत शातिशा We are keen on exploring the inner world through the process of Omkar Dhyana or meditation on Omkar. To understand the path for the onward pilgrimage, we have to be very thorough with the meaning of the of some important terms, uh, namely Karmendriyas, Nyanendriyas, Antahkarana, Bahyakarana. Karmendriyas are the instruments of action. They are the hands, the feet, the speech, the genitals, and the anus. Whereas Nyanendriyas are the instruments of knowledge, the tongue for taste, eyes for sight, ears for sound, nose for smell, and skin for touch. Nyanendriyas and Karmendriyas together are termed as Bahyakaranas. Vedanta defines Antahkarana as the inner conscience or the manifest mind, the mental faculty of the Sukshma Sharira or astral body. In that realm of or empire of antakarana lie four faculties namely manas buddhi ahankara and chitta the manas receives information from the jnanendriyas and transmit it to the buddhi hence its duty is to receive or recognize accept and transmit the information buddhi another faculty decides whether to act or not act on the information received through the manas and also how to react considering the advantages and disadvantages of actions hence buddhi's function is decision making since its decisions lead to action the result of all past and present actions are stored in the third faculty of the antakarana called the chitta in the form of memories hence chitta is the storehouse of memories or smritis the fourth faculty is ahankara or the experiencer of the whole process ahankara owns the results of all actions it is atma karaka or significator of the soul's desire now how are the bahya karanas and antah karanas related to one another the gnanendriyas provide the necessary information or stimulus ahara or food from the world outside to the faculties of the antah karana manas receives the ahara and passes it to the chitta so we can see that manas is continuously being turned out or turned outside being dominated with endless demands by the senses the smritis or memories stored in the chitta is responsible for projecting vrittis or thoughts which lead to desires and action through karmendriyas 
the buddhi gets involved in the process by directing the karmendriyas. Hence, the ten sense faculties of vaihyakaranas act as doors, while the antakaranas function in a coordinated manner to open and close these doors, seeking, capturing and also reacting to the external environment. Now Sij Patanjali states Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodha or Yoga is the process of modification of the thoughts. And this modification or gradually disciplining of the thoughts by providing them Prati Ahara or alternative incentives so that the outgoing tendency of the senses is controlled and turned inwards is termed as pratyahara. It is very interesting to know how one's inner faculties work in order to elevate oneself from the gross level to the subtle or from the disturbed state to quietitude with the help of ashtanga yoga. Through practice of Pratyahara, one can gain mastery over the unruly senses. Pratyahara is probably the most important limb of yoga for us today, with which the Vaihyakaranas can be controlled and the Manasa and Chitta Vrittis calmed. By withdrawing one's awareness from negative impressions and Pratyahara, strengthens the mind's powers of immunity leading one towards dharana and then to dhyana. Now dharana. Dharana is the initial step of deep concentrative meditation where the object being focused upon is held in the mind without the consciousness wavering from it. In practicing dharana, one's awareness is focused on one object or subject. So dharana is focusing. That is, the practitioner's awareness is conscious of the act of meditation on an object and of one's own self, which is concentrating on the object. It involves a lot of effort. Subjects and objects for dharana can be of wide range depending on capability and aptitude of the practitioner. It can be idols, pictures of Ishtadevatas, parents and reverential people or symbols which represent all these or an ideal like Om. Dharana for an advanced practitioner can be thought of these and further on the experience of these. Then one can proceed to focus on self who is the experiencer of the process. The process should evolve step by step, strengthening the willpower and interest in the subject of dharana. As the practitioners become more and more advanced, dwelling in the subsequent stage of dhyana, consciousness of the act of meditation disappears and only the consciousness of being existing and the object of concentration register in the mind. In the final stage of samadhi, the ego mind or the ahankara also dissolves and the seer becomes one with the object. So the difference between dharana, dhyana and samadhi is that in dharana the object of meditation, the practitioner and the act of meditation itself remain separate. In dhyana the object of meditation and the awareness or act of meditation remains same. And in Samadhi, which means oneness, when the meditator, object of meditation and the process of meditation becomes one. Our topic is Omkara Dhyana or meditation on Omkara, one of the methods of meditation. 
Om is the symbol of ultimate reality, symbol of Nirakara Brahman, the indescribable total knowledge, bliss and awareness. Combination of A, O is O and Am that is Om is one of the fundamental symbols used in the yoga tradition which symbolizes the three states of consciousness waking state dream state and deep sleep state respectively in indian scriptures the sacred syllable om is the primordial sound from which all other sounds and creations emerge which signifies the supreme power the description of Om have been given in the four Upanishads, the Mundaka, Mandukya, Shweta Svetara and Katha Upanishad. The Bhagavad Gita and Patanjali Yoga Sutra also describes Om. The sound of Om represents the primal vibration and the Om chanting is an important exhalation exercise. Scientific studies on Oms suggest that the mental repetition of Om results in physiological alertness and awareness and increased sensitivity to sensory transmission. Swami Vivekananda has talked in detail about Om as a sound useful in Dhyana. In fact, in his lecture delivered at uh, Madras in February 1897, he mentioned about his desire of having a non-sectarian temple, having Om as the symbol, the greatest symbol of any sect. The founder of Vivekananda Kendra Mananiya Eknath Ji fulfilled the vision of Swami Vivekananda when he placed the Pranava Pita in the basement of Dhyana Mandapam in the rock memorial at Kanyakumari. Omkar is supposed to be one of the five sources of inspiration of Vivekananda Kendra. Therefore, Omkar is most suitable subject for dharana in the process of Dhyana. In this method of Omkar Dhyana, both audio and visual reflexes of our personality have been utilized. Among the five Jnanendriyas, the ears and the eyes are very powerful sense organs capable of disturbing the mind compared to other three organs namely the nose, the tongue and the skin. This is because the ears and the eyes can distract the mind even if they are at a distance from the sense objects. Hence, Omkar Dhyana helps in disciplining these two organs step by step so that the mind can be gradually controlled. The Dhyana Shloka for Omkar Dhyana has been taken from 6th chapter and 25th verse of the Bhagavad Gita. The meaning of the Shloka is like this. Shanai Shanai that is gradually Uparamet means quietitude Buddhya is by intellect or by the intellect Dhriti grihitaya, grihitaya meaning held in firmness Atma samstham manah krutva or having placed the mind in the Atman Na kinchit apichintayet do not even think of anything. So an entire meaning goes like this. Little by little attain quietitude by the intellect held firmly. Having made the mind established in the self. Then do not even think of anything else. As Swami Chinmayanandaji explains it. Undisturbed by any thought, new thought or thought wave, 
let him maintain his inner silence and come to live it more and more deeply. Both verse 25 and 26 of the 6th chapter of Bhagavad Gita explains the technique of meditation in the most unique manner. In fact, Swami Chinmanandaji declares that no two simple looking stanzas anywhere in the spiritual literature of the world, including the sacred books in Hinduism, can claim to have given such an exhaustive wealth of useful instructions to a seeker as these two stanzas in the Gita. In the next class, we shall understand the steps to be followed during Omkar Dhyana before we actually proceed for the practical part of it.